What's going on people of YouTube? My name has to be Kurt Yo and welcome to a brand new Game Week review. We're reviewing Game Week 39? Game Week 29. So I got a mixture of seeing 30 on the screen and being Game Week 29 we're reviewing. We're reviewing Game Week 29 which was a bumper filled Game Week and if you don't believe that I'm actually getting good scores, last week I gave you 3 players week position which got 68 points which is a huge 10 at least above the average including Nathaniel Klein, who didn't play. So like I'm going to point out, I am on fire for getting things right. Getting them into my team, something I don't do, because I only have one transfer. But anyway, what is going on? How did your game week go? Let me know in the comments down below. But first, we've got to battle through the players who did well, and I haven't got much time, so let's get into it. Starting off with Kasper Schmeichel. Had a good game week against Watford. Picked up two bonus points. Clean sheet as well. Four saves in the game, which was good from him. And 90 minutes played. Brings him on to nine points. Watford have dried up, though, so it was favouring him. But Leicester City slowly but surely marching their way onto the Premier League title. Who knows if they can win it? I think it's starting to actually look like set in stone reality. Moving on from him, we've got another good goalkeeper who, for the running, I think might be a decent choice. It's Adrian. He didn't pick up a clean sheet. He back and conceded two goals, but he did save a penalty that won them the game, effectively. I am saying that's won him the game because Mellon with 3-0 down, game over. Then it gives him a new lease of life, a bit more, you know, oomph about them. All of a sudden, they went 3-2. And, you know, there's still chances against them, but, you know, Fair play to Adrian for getting his team right back in it. Penalty save, one for a bonus, 90 minutes played as well. So, going good for him. Also, six saves made in the whole game. Against 10 men, that is worrying for New, um, Newcastle. For West Ham, though. And lastly, I had to choose between Fabianski or Foster. And I had to choose with the boy that I suggested, Ben Foster. Simple reason. He got a clean sheet against Manchester United, although they were down to 10 men from Juan Mata. Ruthlessly kicking out in UFC style. He picked himself up. Clean sheet. Two for a bonus. 90 minutes played. Good total of eight. Big up Fabianski, though, who picked up a 1-0 win against um, Swansea, against Norwich. Also got himself a bonus point. Made a few saves instead of getting two bonus points. So fair play to him. On to the defenders. Starting off with mixed week for Sunderland's um, two best centre-backs. you got Jose Fonts, who got minus one, and then you got Virgil van Dijk, who managed to get nine. Although he had a yellow card, picked up two for a bonus, 90 minutes played, and also scored a goal, which meant Southampton luckily scavenged a one-all draw against Sunderland, who are going to be fighting for their lives come the end of the season. Then we've got another big player in Ashley Williams. He puts up like three for a bonus, clean sheet, and also 90 minutes played against Norwich. He's looking like a leader. He's looking like someone you'd want in your back four. And at the moment, Swansea's picking up a few clean sheets, and he has played a lot this season. They've had seven. And recently, they've had quite a few, considering, you know, looking at first 16, about one, I'm seeing. So it's not bad from Ashley Williams, indeed. And lastly, we have Hector Bellerin who again didn't have a clean sheet, but two assists from the Spaniard and three for bonus as well, as well as conceding goals for picking up a yellow card, means he ended up on nine points. He effectively kept Arsenal in the game. Following on from that, also got to give credit to Charlie Daniels, who was in my predictions. He did score a goal, and um, again, another good game week for Charlie Daniels. He's picking up quite a few good points scoring weeks. That's four in a row now, five, eight, six, and eight. Looking good in his next fixture. Home against Swansea. What a game that could be. Moving on from that, though, we've got the midfielders, and it's not actually Andy King this week. It's Josh King. Josh King picked up three for a bonus, one assist, one goal, nine minutes played, making his total 13 points. Best thing about him, though, he played as a lone striker with a Fobe, you know, assisting him. He's a midfielder in striker. If he has another good game week, scores goals. Who knows what well, the future could hold. Midfielders that play in striker like him, like Firmino, are definitely ones to have in your team. But let's just see how he goes on the next few game weeks. Moving on from that, we've got Dimitri Payet. One a goal, one assist, three for a bonus, man of match performance. If Adrian, you know, did enough, then, well, my goodness, Payet did enough. You know, Adrian did as well to keep him in the game. Payet won them the game. And uh, fantastic performance again from the Frenchman. And lastly, Riyad Mahrez has made it in. Just to check, I did write him down. I did write him down. I just had to double check there. Riyad Mahrez picked up a goal. Three for bonus, one for a clean sheet and played above the 60 minutes. He'd come off because he was suffering from cramp. Luckily, not a hamstring injury. Oh, that could have been a catastrophe for Leicester. He is the catalyst for their team at the moment. But good performance from him. 11 points. Worthy of any Premier League team. You know, start him. 
you know, you'll get results. Simple as that this season. Also, worth pointing out, Yaya Toure for once actually had a good game, although he was playing against Aston Villa at home. You've also got Gilfie Sigurdsson, piece of 10 points, grabbed the goal in the 1-0 win versus Norwich. Now, finally, the attackers, and of course, you know, if you're going to play Man City at home, and then you're going to have Villa travelling with Aguero starting, it's highly unlikely he's not going to score. And he could have had a hat-trick, except he missed his penalty. Won me 11 quid, though, because I put a £1 bet on them winning 4-0, but... Free for bonus, 8 points for 2 goals, played 90 minutes, but also missed a penalty, bringing him back down to 11. If he would have scored and not missed that penalty, he would have been on 13 points, plus the extra 6, that's 19 points. Uh, plus the extra 4, sorry, that would be 17 points. Not a bad game week, really. I captained him, so, yeah, I knew that was happening. Uh, but, secondly, we've got Diafra Sacco. Now, who would have thought we'd seen him in there? Coming back from an injury, or I think an injury, I'm not too sure. Scored a goal, grabbed an assist. Grabbed a bonus, played only 30 minutes, came off the bench, but what an impact he had. And also, minus one for a yellow card, brings him on to nine points. Good game week and good impact from him. Well played um, from the manager, Slavan Bilic. And also, lastly, we had a choice between Marion Bramchuf and Salomon Rondon. Rondon scored against a 10-man Man United side. And I feel like Juf just did that extra bit, scoring against Chelsea and basically giving their side a draw, which was a good, good result for them. Three for a bonus, played the extra, and um, played the extra above 60 minutes, also scored a goal. Fantastic performance for him, but let's not take it away from Rondon. Had to finish well and did subdue United to another defeat this season. It looks like their top four dream could be all but over. And it could also look like they are finishing behind the mighty, at the moment, West Ham. But... To finish off with, who do I think will make it into teams? Right, Adrian, definitely worth getting in. Cash Michael, definitely worth getting in. Ben Foster, to be honest, I'm ranging towards definitely getting in because they're looking much more solid. And if we have a look at Ben Foster, you know, the fixtures that are coming up, you've got may probably going to rearrange Arsenal. We've got Norwich at home, Sunderland away, ignoring the City game. You've got Watford at home, ignoring the Spurs game. You've got West Ham at home, Bournemouth away, Liverpool at home. All of those games I've mentioned could be games where you can get clean sheets, but I'll leave it as a 50-50 your choice. Then we've got Ashley Williams. I'd say, yes, worth getting him in. Virgil van Dijk, yes, worth getting him in. Now that Font is out, definitely worth bringing him in. And you've also got Hector Bellerin. I'd say yes, because with Shelney injured for the next two game weeks, I'd say worth bringing him in. Then you've got Josh King. Wait on it, see if he still plays up front, plays consistently, and also plays well. Then we'll see, but... Just wait on that one. Dimitri Payet, definitely. Riyad Mahrez, definitely. Because although they're not going to have a double game week for Mahrez, Payet is, and oh, that will be a juicy, juicy one for him. And Aguero, if you've got the money and you're not bringing him in, I, I, you're an idiot. <laughs> then we've got Diafra Sacco, no, because he's not playing first team football, not a certified starter. And then we've got Mamed Baram Juf, no because I don't feel like he's another certified starter. But that is that. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, then leave a like. Let me think in the comments down below. And subscribe. I messed that up a bit. If you feel like I'm worthy. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.